What's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg, and this is another Chance Encounter. Joined today with Nico Salgado. I hopefully I didn't uh, mutilate that up uh, too badly. But uh, how you doing today, Nico? Doing wonderful, my man. You? Oh, I can't complain. After all, I've got my very favorite audience member watching today. And why is my favorite audience member watching? Well, this is a chance encounter, which is where I interview commercial real estate investors. Part of that is because it's the law. The other big reason is because you need to know everybody who's doing the same thing that you are and you have to know important details like why are you doing this and what's the core competency that you're going to be contributing to your next deal. That way we can make better teams, but you're going to be more interested in this because it's going to show you how to effectively communicate on the topic of commercial real estate and you can go to dandoesdeals.com to end up getting your own dive. But before we get too excited, Nico, could you please uh, introduce yourself uh, to the audience? Yeah, my name is Nico Salgado based out of New York. I'm a school teacher, woodworker, entrepreneur, coach, avid surfer, multifamily real estate investor. All right. That's, a, <laughs> that, that's quite the intro. Holy smokes. So uh, what I do first on this show is I always start off with the motivational piece. And then whenever this ends up choking and it doesn't show what I popped up, then I have to do that. And then there it is. So I go through the motivations first because everybody knows why they're getting involved, but maybe they don't know what role they're going to be playing. Sometimes we have some newbies on the show, so that's why I do that. So the first motivation that some people have for making more commercial uh, acquisitions is because they want to preserve their purchasing power. And if you already have a portfolio of assets that pay you and it makes ends meet, then uh, the name of the game is when inflation rears its ugly head, you need to make more acquisitions uh, or else inflation is just going to ruin the party. So that is the reason why some people are making their next acquisition. That's not my big one. My bigger one, because of my background in tech, is I pivoted from trading my time for wages and salary over to wealth directly. And um, really, that's, uh, that was my entire motivation. My background was being uh, in the CRM industry. So that's also mass marketing and segmentation and the uh, credit card funnels online. So that's what I'm up to is because I don't want to be giving half of my effort in income tax. But most people who come on this show, they want to fast track retirement, but more accurately, it's take control over their time. They want to work, maybe it's fewer months per year or fewer weeks per month or fewer hours uh, per week. But uh, regardless, that's what they're up to. But the next two groups, they're not looking to dial down. Like the next one's they're so ambitious, they want to buy their entire hometown and, uh, you know, they, they want to get that generational wealth, make sure that the great grandkids don't uh, uh, don't have to get day jobs ever. So um, that's the ambition one. Whereas the last motivation, it's uh, people sometimes pick a sector of society or maybe it's the environment or animals They want to send people to the moon or Mars or whatever. And uh, they recognize that uh, you need to ac accumulate wealth if you're going to take advantage of the uh, most effective vehicle out there for making a real impact on society or whatever it is you want to make a difference with. So uh, of those five different uh, motivations, what combination of those uh, best describes you? Yeah, great question. And I love, I love the, uh, the format of your show, man. Thank you. So I, I want to help people out and I've always wanted to help people out, uh, but that's not step one. So step one is I want to buy the block. I want to buy my hometown. It's funny that you mentioned it exactly like that because I wrote down two or three years ago, 
I was going to buy every single apartment complex in my town. And <laughs> that was one of my goals. But so what I'm doing is step one is I'm, I'm going to be replacing my income with passive income. Then I can transition out of my W-2. I am one fifth of the way there right now. From there, what I want to do is I want to begin to coach and mentor other people so that they can learn how to train their children and their children's children and the heirs to come, how to do the same thing and how to just live financially free and enjoy their lives. I love that. I love that because there's there's a certain degree of like moving goal poseness. Like like when we're young, I think we all think, oh, I wish I had a million dollars in the bank. But you know, if if you actually have those sorts of numbers, it's like no, you you, you do not want that <laughs> under any circumstances. It needs to stay deployed, right? Mm -hmm. it, um, it it's so funny how it's just not how it appears, but we aren't here to talk about finance we're here to talk about commercial real estate and i want to make sure that you can effectively communicate on the subject of commercial real estate so you can go to dandoesdeals.com and get your own dan does deals commercial roll die i don't even ask for your email address for it it's just totally free it's a really bad idea from a marketing perspective but <laughs> you can do this and i want you to print it out i want you to show it to people i want you to be able to effectively communicate on the subject of commercial real estate so let's talk about the different roles first one is the repositioner they're the acquisitions person they're looking at a bunch of different properties they're doing a bunch of different paperwork the first thing that they're doing they have a fancy word for it they call it underwriting they're doing doing the math they're figuring out okay i'm the buyer so is this building actually making the amount of money that the seller claims it is okay is it actually worth what the seller says it is and they're also going like is there a way that we can make some changes to the property so that we end up generating uh, a, a bigger uh, a net operating uh, income amount here so uh, noi so the repositioner has a few different tools in their toolbox to reposition one of the biggest ones is to get more efficient operations so you stop more of those uh those dollar bills going down the toilet but of course there's more to operations than just uh unclogging toilets and doing maintenance and clearing hallways and whatnot there's also the bookkeeping there's also a marketing component which is one of my uh fortes and that is for keeping the vacancy rate low but uh, for most of the time right now, real estate's too hot. So a repositioner who relies only on more efficient operations, it's not going to be so great for them. So they're probably going to include a contractor team coming in and doing a value add. In other words, they're talking about um, uh, fixing the place up, replacing bits that aren't so nice with bits that are nicer. And then that way, tenants will be happier to pay more rent. And that is what upside is. But if the repositioner repositioner, which many of us really are repositioners, even if we don't realize it, uh, the repositioner, if they're from the internet like me, they got a problem. They need a local. They need somebody who can, lives maybe an hour or two away. Something blows up. They can take care of it. But they're also the accountability piece, making sure that contractors aren't cutting corners and that they're uh, finishing things at the appropriate times. And then the, the operations team, they're not uh, uh, basically sloughing the, what they're reporting. But uh, the repositioner's other way that they can get a little bit more upside is going to a different financier, getting better rates. The financiers of the banks, the mortgage brokers, the fund managers, those types of people, people who deal with the paper and the money only. But uh, the financiers, they're also really an invested in the deal, but they're going to want to know something that I haven't mentioned yet, which is who's the sponsor. And a lot of coaching programs kind of skip over that part. And let me... Um, uh, let you know what this is. Uh, if you want to be eligible for a loan, let's say it's a uh, like a 350 unit apartment complex, something like that. The bank's not just going to lend to anybody. Somebody in the fold has to already own a similar asset. Okay. And uh, uh, you also need a certain amount of liquidity and you need a balance sheet of at least the amount of the loan. But uh, if you have all of those pieces put together, you've got yourself a commercial real estate deal. So Nico, uh, as far as core competencies go, uh, what are you most likely to contribute to your next deal? Love it, Dan. This is, I love the format of this again, man. I got to just commend you for that. I um uh, so I it's the, I'm like two and a half years into my journey right now, and I was tossing back and forth between a, a variety of those roles. Obviously, one of them I could not play was, you know, the the being the balance sheet. However, I found my role recently at where I am most 
in my zone of genius when I am the repositioner. So I love the hunt, man. I love finding the deals. I love doing the initial underwriting. I love schmoozing brokers to where they'll kind of give me a little pocket listing prior to hitting market. And I love that. I, that's what excites me most. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So the next question I have for you then, you're talking about smoozing uh, with these different brokers, brokers and commercial investors alike. They, they're, the big question that's going to be going through their mind is what is my guest's ideal property? What are they looking for? What's easier to say yes to? What's more difficult to say no to? And usually you can break that down into three different parts. The first thing they're going to want to know is the geography. So what state what county okay uh there maybe even what neighborhood is it in okay they're going to need to know where it is and then the second thing is going to be the unit count now there are some forms of commercial real estate like industrial and warehousing where it's about square footage but uh usually there's a unit count that we're talking about in the other different types of commercial so you're going to need to know that and then the third one is class and unfortunately class has two different meanings First one is talking about the condition of the building. Is it beat up? Okay, then it's like a C or maybe it's a D or something like that. Is it amazing? And then it's an A or an A plus or an A minus. And then the other one is the neighborhood that the building is in. Okay, so what's the crime rate there? What's the, what are the schools like? And those are both called class. So Nico, as far as uh, if somebody's bringing you something, uh, what's easier for you to say yes to? Uh, excellent question, man. So. Uh, I, on, I, my target market is Tampa and the surrounding areas of Tampa, although I live in New York. So like you, I am from the internet and I look at everything from 10 to 150 units. However, uh, that's going to determine how I'm going to uh, take the deal down. So my most exciting acquisition is going to be anywhere from 20 to 40 units, because I feel that that's something that I can lead as the lead sponsor on the deal myself. However, I've, you know, offered on plenty of deals and I've gotten pretty close on hundred recently at 146 unit, but I was going to have to take on a lot of people uh, to help co-sponsors to help me get that done. And that doesn't excite me as much. I look at B and C class properties and B and C areas. I'm not afraid of a little section eight. I'm not afraid of a little bit of, uh, of crime. I've dealt with it before, but I would prefer something in a B area that is a C class property. All right. Beautiful. And uh, as far as uh, people to reach out to you, uh, my favorite part of commercial real estate is how, because <clears throat> it's multifaceted and nobody can be all of the pieces at once, you know, it's, they're not going to be doing it uh, for, for much any amount of time. And, uh, but one of the consequences of us all having different proclivities is uh, we'll be more or less uniquely situated to help some people more than others. Me personally, because of my marketing background and whatnot, I'm always on the lookout for more sponsors or KPs. It's they're going to actually have the system and infrastructures where I can actually make a bigger impact. Uh, so, so those are the people who I'm looking for. But, but uh, without enticing any investors or, or breaking any SEC restrictions, if you have any 506Bs on the go, if you have a 506C, <laughs> then, then do what you want. But, uh, but who can, who, who's the best person for you to help? Like a beginner, intermediate, advanced? Like who, who are you looking for these days? I love talking to, uh, and I actually have a podcast series regarding this, new investors that are trying to break into the multifamily space that are either coming from single family or residential multifamily that are trying to break into the multifamily, commercial multifamily space. I love talking to those people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. And the best way, yeah, uh, the, as you asked me, the best way to get in touch with me, I would love for them to go to my website, which is www.smallaxecommunities.com. My company name, I also have a podcast. You guys could check it out. It's a small axe podcast. My company name is small axe or small axe communities where I believe it only takes a small axe to build a lasting empire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So, and then, and then as far as like social media goes, like uh, we ended up crossing paths on LinkedIn uh, is, is LinkedIn good as well? Or uh, is it more important to go to the website? Either one, man. LinkedIn, I, I'm very active. I, I post basically five times a week on LinkedIn, on um, Facebook and Instagram. I somehow went viral on, on TikTok with like a weird uh, duet kids video or whatever I was doing with my daughter. And uh, so you could find me there too. Any, any social media platform works. All right. Awesome. And uh, uh, similar to that, I actually have something to say to you in the audience, which is uh, if you look under my left hand, you'll see that there's this, especially on a desktop, there's this, 
it's ugly. It's a big red ugly button and it says subscribe on it. And the only way to get rid of it is to click on it. Okay. Then it turns gray and like the gray one is amazing. You should definitely check it out. It costs you absolutely nothing. It doesn't ask for your email. You just click it and then buy red button of death and anger and hello, <laughs> gray button of tranquility. And it has a magical <laughs> power, you know, it means that YouTube pays for these videos instead of me. Isn't that awesome? And after you do that, you can go on to Nico's channel and because and, after all, it's free. You should subscribe to his channel too. Because, you know, you don't even have, all it really does is it means that our videos might show up on your list of suggestions. You can ignore them. You already did them us a great favor by subscribing and by watching today. So thanks for watching today. And Nico, this has been awesome uh, getting to know you better. Oh, you're the man, Dan. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching this chance encounter. I want to tell you about 506 B me though, so that you can document your relationships for 506 B compliance. The way it works is when you sign up, you get your very own QR code that is unique to you. Then if somebody has the QR code scanner in their phone, if you're at a, on a live call on zoom, or if you're at a live event, you can just scan their code like this. And then what happens is that adds you to their watch list. So when they get back to their hotel room or they get back home, they can binge watch through everybody who they met's videos and then they can make sure that they have the compliance. So check it out. Make sure you 506 B me after this. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I just want to tell you, cause I've actually seen your website, Real Estate is a Scam, before and I loved it. Oh, and, cool. Uh, so, uh, yeah, because I think it's really so spot on. There's good stuff, bad stuff in every industry. Yeah, make sure you subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell for Dan the Man. And thank you. Uh, turn that subscribe button uh, from red like his beard to gray like his beard will be. So I met Dan through some networking groups for real estate investing. Uh, he's a great guy from what I know about him. He's uh, very ambitious and he makes it easy to come on with his questions and has a great setup. It's easy, it's uh, clear, concise, and I'd recommend going on to his interviews for anyone that's considering it. Uh, it's, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced. It was super fun, um, the process was so easy a caveman can do it. I mean, if you guys haven't done it yet, you guys need to get on his calendar. Just take 15 minutes of your time, get exposure, find out who Dan is, what he's about. He's a true trifecta. Um, and if you don't know who he is, get in touch with him. Google his name, find him on LinkedIn, do whatever you can, just reach out to him. So I, I, I really appreciate the format. Uh, like like I've told you uh, a couple times before, I, I think it's, it's really great because uh, me personally, I'm very long-winded. Uh, I have to purposefully make things more concise, but the way I take things in is uh, I definitely prefer things to be concise and straight to the point and concentrated. And uh, the chance encounters really do that uh, great for individuals. So you can get a good grasp on who they are, what do they do, why do they do it, uh, what space do they operate in. That's, that's why I love chance encounters.